and horrifying study of 23 male cadavers found microplastics in every single one of their testicles. I don't know why they specifically investigated the testes, but that's what the scientists did for this study. And what they found was, yeah, microplastics in every single one's testicles. So uh, the study, which was conducted at the University of New Mexico, wasn't just limited to human testicles, though. The new study compared the levels of 12 different types of plastics in those testicles with plastics found in 47 dog testes. So not Stop only saying do- the word testicles, please, it's just too much. It's you've done it like 12 times. It's too much. Okay, let me think of synonyms. Um, male sacks. I, go back to testicles, please. Okay. <laughs> please. Right. You're All good. Right, good. Good. Okay. So, toxicologist Matthew Campen, who's the co author of the study, says this the levels of microplastic shards, oh, God. Micro, microplastic shards, which sounds so painful, <laughs> and types of plastics in human testes were three times greater than those found in dogs. And the dogs are eating off the floor. So it really puts in perspective of what we're putting in our own bodies. It <laughs> also, keep in mind that the amount of microplastics multiplies tenfold if uh, the human male also happens to be a dog. Uh, John, take it away. And if he eats off the floor. Also, <laughs> uh, speak for yourself, doctor. Uh, Anna's dog, Charlie, does not eat off the floor. He eats out of Never. a crystal dish. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I love, first of all, why are you throwing dogs under the bus? Why are you implying that that's how the plastics are getting into our body? That we're like eating chunks of it. That's not how it works. It's not, it's not shards like that. It's tiny little bits, which I'm sure yes. are still very damaging. But it's ambient, it's in the water, it's in all of that. Like I think that makes people not sure about that. So look, I, I'm glad that this reporting has come out. I'm sure it is way too late socially to do anything about this. But obviously there are concerns about the long term impact on health, particularly reproductive health when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of very, I know you, you often talk about like, you know, wanting to find common ground with people that we disagree with on things. Like this is the sort of thing that in theory, we should be able to find common ground with like the Alex Joneses and all that. Cuz they love talking about reproductive health and testosterone levels and you know sperm levels and everything. But the issue is that if you take this seriously and you try to track down how it happened, you inevitably are going to discover that corporations are responsible. And that is a path they will never walk down. Maybe if it's like a shady Jewish billionaire or something, it has to be something vague. It can't be anything that will result in us having to regulate corporations to stop having them poisoning our air, water, and soil. Yeah, I think there's a difference between Republican politicians and the average Republican voter. Because, you know, I remember when Trump privatized some of the federal lands, or actually what he did was he allowed for fossil fuel companies to start drilling on public lands. A lot of Republican voters were actually furious about that because believe it or not, they really appreciate public lands as well. They like to go hunting, they like to go camping, they're very outdoorsy. So there is common ground and it's really about breaking through or piercing through some of the media filter bubbles that I believe withholds this kind of information or this kind of reporting from you know, the other side of the political aisle. And by the way, vice versa, like there are certain stories that I think that we miss because of these filter bubbles. And so it's important to have a healthy, diverse media diet, yada, yada. We don't have to get into that right now. But yes, John, you're also correct. Look, I don't want anyone to think like, no, there's literal shards of plastic in men's testicles. That's not what they found. They're literally called microplastics. And so it's basically due to the food and water that we consume. And I want to talk a little bit about, you know, there's a lot we don't know about how this is impacting our health, but there's a lot that we do know as well. And I want to share some of what we know. So according to the reporting, the scientists know that certain chemicals inside plastic disrupt our hormones. Chemicals like BPA are 
colloquially known as hormone disrupting chemicals. And plastic makers are developing new ones all the time. In addition to the specific chemicals that are used to make a plastic, there are also, or there may also be physical issues to worry about with plastic ingestion. In March, a New England Journal of Medicine study even suggested microplastics lodged into blood vessels in our necks might be playing a role in heart attack and stroke risks. So, you know, and when it comes to the hormonal disruption, you know, BPA has been linked to girls going through puberty at much younger ages. And so you can make some changes in your life. For instance, if you're using like plastic Tupperware or plastic containers, if you can try to switch to glass, um, that might be a better and healthier way of containing your food uh, without contaminating it with uh, microplastics. And uh, so while it is true that sperm counts in parts of the world, including the United States, have declined by at least 50%, um, over 50 years, we can't say for sure that microplastics are to blame yet. There still needs to be more study into this. Any uh, final thoughts, John? Yeah, just in general, I think that people, I think a lot of people are already critical of what we allow corporations to emit. I don't think they necessarily understand that you you have one party that is pretty weak sauce on dealing with that, and you have another that wants to remove any of the minor regulations that already exist. And it's something that should be prioritized way more, particularly if you find this sort of story as scary as you probably should. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.